Member Sides and Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Today is Tuesday, November 19th at 6 p.m. This is a regular meeting of the Greensburg Water Board. Uh, uh, roll call. Chuck? Yes. Tony? Here. Iris? Here. Mike? Here. Frank and Robin are absent. Okay. Minutes from October 15th meeting were distributed in your packet. Any corrections or objections to the minutes is distributed. I did see uh, Robin was down as absent on the minutes, and he showed showed up late. So I have him down down direction. down through there that he arrived at six oh seven. So I don't know how to do it for the form. We should not believe on any of that. Very good. Um, just because we've moved item three up here, no, and yeah. I put it in that he arrived and kind of. I think that's probably the accurate way to say it. Um, the only thing you could mention is you could put a parenthetical after Robin Meyer. Um, it just says uh, arrived later, see below. Okay. That way you can go and look down. Very good. So what I did is I had Joe, our, our maintenance guy, take it up to Roger McCracken Five Point uh, Trailer Sales to see if um, he possibly had a trailer that he might trade us, and he did. It's an open concept. Um, it's not a box trailer. It's 14 foot long, 14 by six and a half. Um, it's perfect for all the other things. Exactly. Was it a used trailer? Then? No, it's a brand new trailer. Okay. It's a brand new trailer. Um, if you look, it's a 2000. Uh, 13 <coughs> it's 14 by 6 foot 6 inches it's 14.75 he's going to give a 775 trade in for a, a total of $700 sounds fair enough to me I think it's a pretty good deal too I make a motion to approve the trade in been made and seconded to uh, purchase a trailer from Five Points with a trade-in a difference of $700. That's a world call. Chuck? Yes. Tony? Yes. Iris? Yes. Very good, right? Thank you. What else you got for us? Um, in your packet you have a uh, possible uh, contaminant site letter that we have to send out according to our stage two water protection plan. We will have to send these out to any business in our delineated area that can possibly contaminate our water supply. Um, it's not telling them how to run their business. No, by no means. It's just educating them, uh, educating them on 
you know, you are in a, in a delineated area which water will flow, could possibly flow toward if you have a chemical spill or, or what have you, to, um, to have kind of better chemical management or so have you. So that's, um, I wanted you guys to read it and see if that sounds good to you to, to get the bill. Hydrophase, Jim Carr is the one that actually put this together um, initially. If you have noticed, if, you, if you've been on the city website, there is a, um, an icon on there now that takes you to our wellhead protection plan. It's not the actual plan because we don't want just anybody to see that. Um, but it will um, refer you to the water plan for myself. If, if, you know, if you're in our area and you want to come and look at our, our plan, what we're doing um, to protect our water supply, you're more than welcome to do that. So that's what it explains on there just kind of screening material for you that um, if as a board member, a water board member, if somebody comes up to you and says, hey, what's this letter I got in the mail? And I didn't want you to be blindsided on, you know. <laughs> this, this, this is an ongoing process. I believe the well protection plan actually started in 2000, if I remember correctly. It's in our phase two now. So <clears throat> somewhere around that area, I think it actually started a little bit before that. Is this a good all of the industries and stuff? It does not include all the industries. What they had to do is they had a model um, where the water would flow or how, you know, towards the wellheads itself or what possibly recharge that where we pour groundwater at. So anybody in that area will get this letter um, stating that you are in a wellhead protection area. If something would happen, you know, please let us know or, you know, just better management with their, their storage or their chemicals or their practices and what have you. you know, Whatever the business might be. So, so is that a certain mile radius or something? Or it's uh, again, it, Iris. I don't know. But it's a it's a model that um, actually Hydrophase did. Um, I think we went with the original delineated area, and I didn't come back and said, no, this ain't gonna work this time. So it's a it's a modeling they do on the computer that shows the flow where the water goes. So that's about all I can tell you on that. I don't, I'm not sure how it works. Or, Actually, I just seen Darren walk in. He probably knows all about the modeling. It has a lot to do more to do with the geology of the surrounding areas. Um, they used to originally it was done as a like a two or five mile radius, but um, that got to be encompassing a lot more than probably was practical. Um, so it's based on. The ge more of a geology based and it's based on how much you're pulling out so how fast you go across and and luckily in Indiana you have a pretty high level of clay protective area above um, but unfortunately around here your most of your wells are what they call rock wells so one if you were to pen penetrate that clay protective layer it will run pretty quickly in, in these rock cracks and formations so it's you're try the whole point of the program is to be proactive, know where your potential contaminants are and where you potentially could have some problems and so that you can continue to monitor it. Okay. See Darren, I've been to Waterboard meeting. How long did it say you walk in? <laughs> That's a pretty tough question. I'm just gonna stay in back. That's pretty good. And one of the reason uh, one of the reasons that we had to read delineate is because uh, for some reason the state with Darren mentioned it. It is true that our clay is so high here, they're making us go a lot deeper, which in turn spreads out our, our area a lot further where they're saying it can be recharged. So that's why we have to do that. Again. Is this ready to go as is in the frick? Or? Yes, all I have to do, I have actually have it on my computer, is fill in the businesses, um, which will be right underneath the um, city of Greensburg over um, your business or property owner, so, no, so they know it pertains to them, and then um, in the middle. There's 37 of them, actually, that will be sent out.
Yes. We had some issues with like double double settings and, and in the program they did some restructuring at Mueller also so now we actually have a new project manager. Um, Donna's worked with him. I haven't even met the project manager. Donna's worked with him um, so far. Uh, he seems to be doing you have a baby. So I know the, the bugs, the lids issue, we've got the, a lot of them. Um, I have a part-time guy that's out ahead of everybody that's, that's doing cutting the holes and getting you know, the lids installed. And it's going slow. We got bugs. We knew there was going to be bugs to work out, but once it's up and running, it's going to be very. It's going to be a very. It's going to be an asset to the like you got your plasma cutter and everything. It's yeah. working all right there. Then. It's working awesome. It's doing exactly what we wanted to do or what it, what we needed to do. So uh, we're we're up over 200 now, I believe, installed. And that was last week or something. 232. So, which is kind of, it sounds kind of slow, but once we get everything, I think our handhelds, are they even all of them programmed yet? We're still waiting on a few of those. Tomorrow morning, Scott's going to call us and we're going to put on the new firmware. There was a problem with the dual ports. It wouldn't, it would not do them. But once we would install, it would turn a uh, mino to a brick, which basically kills it. So we have a little box of dead ones. <laughs> Where we've been experimenting, so they had to rewrite the program to make that work. And we're going to install that on a handheld and test that tomorrow. So, sounds like you're making headway. Yes. yes. Like you said, we've got all of Route 1 with the lids drilled. They're almost with, done with Route 2 and taken it from there, but they are working pretty quickly on getting the lids. And we want to get the double, the dual ports to be able to use those. It's two ports with just one mino. Otherwise, we'd have to drill two holes in the lids, and they would give us single ones. But we're going to try to hang on a little bit longer to see if they can get, them, get the program fixed. Or you? Any other questions? have anything they'd like to bring before the board tonight? If not, adjourn.